Hello, and welcome to a new interview from MinMax. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, and getting better. I'm Kyle Hilliard. I'm doing today's interview. Ben Hansen usually handles these, but I'm such a big Little Nightmares fan that I wanted to talk to Dave Mervick. Dave Mervick is the narrative director on both Little Nightmares 1 and 2, and we talk about inspirations. We talk about Play Dead. I make a giant... A uh, revelatory statement about the name of the game's protagonist that really throws Dave for a loop near the end. So stick around for that. And thanks for watching. Dave Mervick, welcome to MinMax. Thanks for coming by. Hey, my pleasure. So I haven't, I, I guess I should set this up. I haven't beaten Little Nightmares 2 yet. So we can kind of confirm this will be spoiler free. I just, I just got past the teacher. That's where I'm at, you know. Ooh. So uh, she was, she was very creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you're the their narrative designer, right? And you were a narrative designer on Little Nightmares 1 and, and 2, right? On both, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I, um, well, I mean... Yeah, I mean, my, my, my job in, entailed mainly working on the lore in the background, though, since uh, it's, it's uh, completely dialogue-free. So, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's an unusual narrative design the task on, the, on these games. But. Well, after playing a lot of Little Nightmares 1 and a lot of Little Nightmares 2, my, my first question, uh, I, are you okay? It's like, you know, <laughs> like... You mean, like, deep inside? Just personally, emotionally, like... No, of course not. <laughs> of course Who not. Who is? <laughs> but uh, this game provides you a good outlet to, to figure that out, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, it's been a hard year, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I mean, I guess you guys, when did Little Nightmares 2 development begin? Just, like, right after 1 wrapped up, right after the DLC was done? I don't think it was right after. I think, I mean, everyone needed to sleep a little bit and, you know, stop crying. Yeah, get some more and nightmare then, uh, fuel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Just go out in the world. That's all you need to do. Um, but now, I mean, you know, like say I, I, I work on the lore a lot. That's kind of been ongoing since very early on in the first game's uh, development. And so I, I just kind of keep following different threads to kind of take my take my fancy, you know, like something to get you get hooked on because there's something maybe you're experiencing in real life. Like, you know, this is this has got, got something worth exploring here. So, like, it's... I think at last count, it was 150, 200 pages of, of stuff to delve into. So, I think once we started thinking uh, next game-wise, then it was time to go back into into all that stuff and uh, and see what it was that hooked us and what, what other people in the other teams were thinking about, you know, what they were interested in. And, and gotcha. that, so, yeah. But I don't know how long it's been now. What year is it again? It's, well, it's currently I think someone from Bandai is probably, probably better at telling us when we started all this, but maybe three years, two, three years, something. Yeah. Okay, that sounds about right, yeah. I You mentioned the, the script and how many pages it was, and you also already mentioned that this is a game that does not have dialogue what mm-hmm. does a script for little nightmares look like does it just read like a novel yeah no that's what i mean it's not as we don't have a script it's it's like law you know so there's lots of um biographies like character biographies and uh, like what is what drives like the the residents you know like the enemies in the game what, what what's what's going on where do they come from you know like give them a backstory what it is, what's the, what's their what's the id that drives those characters, and like you know, all of the the children come from you know they don't belong in this world. So it's like what what where were they before? What kind of patterns shaped their life, and what was it that kind of brought them here? And because that informs the the continuation of their journey once they come into little nightmares, because they you know that like I say, they're here for a reason. There's some something in their life. Uh, before they arrived here, that kind of made them a, a, a good fit for coming to Little Nightmares, if you like. It's probably gotcha. about as much as I should say. Well, so, it, yeah, uh, it's like... It, I was going to cool. ask because, like, for me, I, I play through those games and it's I, there's obvi- there's a narrative that you can track and there's assumptions that you can make about mm-hmm. the story, but it, it seems like it's mm-hmm. very much, and, you know, you can answer this question, that it's very much more, like, how it feels, you know, just, like, what you're supposed to be feeling as opposed to sort of you know, dissecting the narrative. And my question is, you have a lot of notes about explicitly what the game is about. Do you think that stuff would ever be made public or do you guys just want to keep that for yourselves to kind of, you know, direct you internally? Again, I would say that's kind of up to Bandai. I mean, they own the IP, so I think they can kind of decide when is the right time to give people, you know, maybe something definitive. Um, 
because I mean the the whole thing with these games is you don't we did we never wanted to tell people too much. That's where they were born. Born out of was this kind of you know exhaustion almost of games that didn't give you time to think or play for yourself. You were just experiencing it. You know the game was was talking at you, and you kind of go, okay, so that's the story there then. And we were like, it, it shouldn't feel that way. You know, I wanna I wanna think for myself. I wanna like look around and and piece you know puzzle pieces together so it was that was one of the founding pillars really the the kind of the forms what what little nightmares became so yeah there's probably stuff we would never say but like i mean if you look at i don't know if you've seen the digital comics that came out recently plug plug um (laughs) but that's like that but that's a really nice example of of giving people more you know outside of the games there's this there's Stuff you'll you will encounter when playing the main game, Little Nightmares 2, and this gives you like a little bit more like detail, a little bit of backstory about these really kind of seemingly inconsequential uh, events that you kind of encounter in the main game. They've got the, you breathe life into them, and you just kind of expand the world in a in a way that feels natural and you know kind of engaging for people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, of course, I, I I worked really hard on it, so I want to tell everyone everything. I love read it all, but it would like it would destroy everything that works so hard to create. So. Uh, yeah, no, understandable. Um, so I wanted to go back a little bit because I know you worked on Little Nightmares One. Um, mm. That game started with a different name. It was in development for a while. Can you? I don't know mm. if you've ever. Maybe you have, and I just missed it as a fan. I, I've always looked out for it. But why did the game go through so many name changes? Right, because it was hunger. For a while, yeah, and then it didn't it change to a second name before it came before it became Little Nightmares. Or no, I, I mean, no, it, it was Hunger, and then it it was called a thousand different things when we were trying to find what it was going to be officially called. <laughs> so I think we used the the world's post-it note uh, supply uh, during that weekend, and we were just kind of you know. Some terrible things we thought of, and then some stuff that was like, "Ah, oh, this feels close," um, and then yeah, Little Nightmares was the one that stuck really because like the game had grown by that point. But hunger was the was the theme, and it remained the theme, you know. But it wasn't just about it was never just about food, you know. Um, it was about it was about all the different kind of interpretations of hunger. And, and you know uh, the problem. You know, obviously, I'm sure you realised the reason we had to change it because of people search for hunger game. We didn't get ours. Yeah, it's not the, <laughs> so, it's not the best SEO. Yeah. It is one of those things when the name changed to Little Nightmares. Just tracking it as someone who's interested in it. I was like, okay, okay that's a good yeah. title. But then after you play the game, you're like, oh, hunger was actually a really good title too. Now that you know, yeah, sort of what happened. That was the heartbreaking. That was the heartbreaking thing about that, really, because we, you know, it started off as like. My working working title. I always like to give things a title that kind of you know hooks me in that. But then the more we worked with it, it was like this is the title, isn't it? We can't we can't lie about that. And then you also can't ignore the fact that Google is a part of <laughs> of yeah. everything now, so people have to find it. And it was just you like that. No, that can't be the reason we change for this. <laughs> but it, you know, it, you can't you can't uh, you can't exist in a bubble yeah it's important stuff still uh do you remember any of those uh bad names any of those post-its that immediately all of them i wake up screaming about them (laughs) (laughs) um probably got them all in a document somewhere but uh that's definitely staying locked away that that one you're not ready to uh share with the world i guess i mean we might use them for something else (laughs) oh yeah um the uh you mentioned a bandai namco owning the ip this does mm. not seem like a typical Bandai Namco game, but mm. it seems to have been a success for them. You know, we wouldn't be talking about Little Nightmares 2 if Little Nightmares wasn't a hit. I mean, how did that relationship come about? I mean, I, I wasn't there for that one. That was, uh, you know, our CEO and uh, other important people went over to to make sure they did that job well. But uh, I think it, came, it was like just serendipity, really, that it came at a time when, Bandai Namco were, were looking to move into you know more more of this kind of area, these kind of games, um, and we're very very lucky that this game was was right up their street. You know they they weren't looking to change it in that way. It wasn't like yeah this is a good 
generally good idea. We like the name, but we're going to, you know, do our own thing with it. Yeah, we need some more um, anime characters in here. They didn't yeah, give, give Six like some, like, samurai swords and, you know, <laughs> like, quadruple jumps and such. It wasn't about that. It, oh, that's that, good. that. I think that was the thing that was really exciting to everyone is that they bought into it as, as it was. And obviously they had their own kind of take on it, like where we could really accentuate areas and stuff. So it was still kind of a collaboration, but yeah, it was, uh, it was one of those things that, yeah, it, it just took off at a really good time for, for both of us. So. Yeah. Um, for the whole, the broader series, I'm curious what kind of, and not, not even necessarily video games, but like books, movies, stuff like that. Like what are some specific inspirations for Little Nightmares for you? Uh, for me, oh god, can you hear that? Man? Laptop's just making noises at me constantly. No, I only hear um, you. Oh god, <laughs> just me and my own personal hell. Then, <laughs> um, yeah, it's. Um, I think for me personally, Roald Dahl was one I always came back to because I kind of missed that. You know, like the the popular kids uh, books nowadays. I, mean, I think they go a little bit dark still, but I always remember Roald Dahl felt very dark. You know, like bad things happen to kids in those books, and even though they were very fantastical in their own way, um, and not in a little nightmares way, you know, there, there were very kind of fantastical elements, but also it didn't always have a, a super happy ending, and there were consequences, you know, and uh, and that was something that, that I, I always looked looked back at. And there's another one our art director kind of pointed me towards it. I'd never read a book called Momo before it's by Michael Ender. I don't know if you know that one. No, um, I'm not familiar with that. The one. guy who wrote Never Ending Story, he also wrote this book called Momo, which is a, a beautiful book, actually. I, I, I bought it for many people ever since. But uh, that was another one that kind of something that had a real kind of heart and quite a dark heart for the majority of that book. And so that's, that, that kind of stuff informed my thinking. Um, but I, I always say, you know, it depends who you talk to, mm. because everyone like just absorbs so much of like whether it's cultural influences or just the world around you or just you know a, a small part of an image that you see that kind of sticks in your throat a little bit, and you just keep they just keep it. Particularly our artists, they just have these folders just filled with like gifs and images and stuff and just things with an, a texture that gives them a certain feeling. Um, and for me, I'm like, I'm a, probably a very tedious, uh, massive library of movie references. So whenever I talk about anything, it's always in relation to a movie or a scene in a movie or a quote from a movie or whatever. So mm. there's probably a million and one things that, um, it's movies and music for me always. So if I'm writing a particular thing, then I'll have a particular kind of music on that just puts me in a certain place. And I think I've, that's probably the thing that kind of connects us all is it's about getting into that place, into that mindset. And how you how you get there um, is is probably different for all of us. I think. Yeah, I mean, and continuing down that track of inspirations and stuff. I mean, Play Dead is an obvious comparison. I mean, do you guys get tired of that mm. comparison, or do you find it flattering? What do you think of it? Uh, probably, I would say probably both of those options at one time, because yeah it's super flattering because uh, I, again speaking personally I love both of those games but they weren't something that we set out to mimic mm. um, I mean we I think we were underway with uh, Little Nightmares 2 when Inside came out I can't remember I, I, my timeline is just one big blob so <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't help um, that the last year is like just screwed <laughs> exactly up. I know I was in bed <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but now I mean and again, you know, at the pains of repeating myself, but one thing that I, I, I say it quite often, because this does come up, you, don't, you can't help but, it, you know, see the, the similarities there. But the truism of, of, of this is that when we've seen, particularly with Limbo, it, what we saw in that gave us confidence because you don't see that that often that people, you know, a studio has the courage of its convictions to that extent to go, we're doing this. We've got a vision. This isn't super trendy right now. You know, we're making these artistic decisions, these design decisions, because we believe that this is something that has value and we want to put out there. And when you see people do something like that, first of all, you, you're really, really kind of inspired. But then when it does well, you're like that. People do want this. You know, that our gut, our gut was 
kind of in tune there is that so much of what what we talked about when we were thinking about hunger in the first instance came out of why aren't games like this? Why aren't the games like this out there already? If we ever got the chance, this is what we would do. And then we got the chance and we did. Uh, and so companies like Playdead, it just gives you that little bit of, you know, bravery to, to trust your gut a bit more and, 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 and run with what you think is right. And I've got to say, I... I'm really proud to work at a studio like ours. I've got to say, because I've uh, I've worked in other places and 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 there were successful companies, but like to to hit to be with people who really can follow their, you know, it sounds so pretentious, but their muse. You know, the people can really express themselves, and the company wants them to do that. It's not about no 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 back off, do it this way. You know, don't don't push yourself too far. It's it's the other way. They want they want us to push ourselves harder. So we don't we think you can do better than this. Go back and do it again. And iteration and iteration and iteration is such a cornerstone of everything we do. Uh, it's a very long answer to the question, but uh, yeah. No, it makes a lot of sense. They 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 open the door for that sort of I I arguably like more artistic experience, and you guys were happy to have it open. It sounds like you know. Yeah, yeah, we just ran through it. Yeah. <laughs> in one massive line. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Um, but you, you never know because, you know, if, we, if we're lucky, then other people might look at what we've done and, and, and go, right, well, we've got an idea. We're going we're gonna to have a bash at it because these, these people have, you know, these studios have, have done it now. It's, it's, it's only good, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's funny. I had never thought Raw Dahl. Uh, but the moment, <laughs> the moment you said it, I'm like, that makes total sense and um i've actually found uh just personally like uh, my my daughter who is uh, nine years old who does not like creepy things will not mm. let me play little nightmares 2 without her she wants to see what happens oh. next <laughs> so i i'm curious like is is getting that t rating important is like is do you kind of see the game as being in that sort of raw doll bubble of like four children to a certain degree? Like, what do you think of that? Have you found that kids are interested in the game? Yeah, I mean, they are. It's it, it's, it's one of them. You kind of like, oh, you, you're not allowed to play it. Because you know, there's so many of them that are probably a bit too young still and all that. But I, re I remember as a kid myself, that's the stuff you're really interested in. So we've probably been a bit cruel. <laughs> you know, is is maybe putting it out of <laughs> their grasp, but but it's what you know. I I remember watching V when I was a kid, and that was really like that. I wasn't allowed, but we had me and my brother had the TV on. This back in the eighties, a long time ago, we had the TV on super quiet because I wasn't allowed to watch V, but I had yeah. to. And then you stared, you, know, and, you and, stared and, and, into the TV, and you rotated the right control stick a little bit, right, until everything. <laughs> you know, the whole world war. Yeah. <laughs> But I think there's something lovely about that, though, that like, because it's not so, it's not so horrific that you're gonna destroy them forever. But it's it's just it's slightly naughty. I think that's a, it's a nice balance to try and strike. Yeah, I yeah. mean, do you do you? It was a guys... guy. It was a guy when we had birthdays when I was very young. I think this is terrible now. But I mean, I think we were probably about seven or eight years old. And we, every every kid's party in the area, this guy would come along with his projector and and his reels, and he'd show clips of movies. But they were terrible. They were like really horror movies. Like there was one that was like horror. It was a uh, trauma, like The Incredible Melting Man. What? It was like Showing a really these to children? gross <laughs> clip of Jaws. Oh, there was no. so much, and we loved it. We loved this guy. He was a proper little, you know. He was a bit of a mischievous old man. <laughs> totally lovely, but and and we it'd be like that. Do you want to see the clip of the melting man? We're like, yeah. Looking back, it's like that. We like I say, we were about eight, nine years old. Like he, that shouldn't have been happening. <laughs> so you're you're that guy now on a larger scale, I, right? That's, yes, exactly. <laughs> <that's funny. laughs> Finally. <laughs> uh, I mean, so, sort of on that topic of um, you know being creepy and scary. I mean. Is there a line that you guys feel like you can't cross? Is there something that you sort of integrated in the game that you're like, you know what, this is too much, it has to go? Did you guys run into anything like that? Um, I mean, you do, don't you? It's it's all about taste and like what you're actually trying to achieve, and we're never really trying to. There's some you can't lose something when you go too far. I think. 
Mm. You know, it's like, do you want to make hostel? Well, no, because it doesn't. It's meaningless. And I don't think we're, I'm not. I'm not comparing this game to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I think there's something really, really effective in Texas Chainsaw Massacre that absolutely isn't present in the film, like Hostel. Like those two, are, you, you know, to the casual observer, you go, "Ah, they're both disgusting movies." But I, I would disagree there because there's there's a choices made that that you know, that have a purpose. Well, what am I trying to achieve here? So in our case, it's the same. Like, what are we doing this just for shock value? Do we achieve our goals anymore by by showing this or by having this happen to this character? No, we don't. Well, then it's too far then. And obviously there's more practicalities like, you know, yeah, we're going for a certain rating, so we, we, can't, we can't do that even if we wanted to. Um. Uh, I can't. I don't know. I can't think of any specific stuff. Mm. But yeah, it, it, it's generally not like we're told to not include something. We just look at it and go, "Nah, come on, that's too far." Yeah. So gotcha. it's, it's about your own your own instincts. So the but the teacher's neck that was you guys were cool with that. That was that was good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just charming, really. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I I'm curious, just from like you know when you're making a game you kind of, you play these sequences over and over and over. I mean, just using the teacher as an example, like how do you know these things are scary after looking at them for a month? You know, like what is, is it just, is it just your gut or is it, you know, putting it in front of new people? How do you, how do you know that a game remains scary after so much time? Yeah. I mean, there's always the risk that you can kind of get desensitized to it, but yeah, a a lot of it is getting different people to play it a lot as well. You know, particularly if it's about getting a certain effect, and I don't know if you if you need to keep trying that effect, because you always know what you're going for. So it's a it's about kind of calibrating that quite early on, I think. Um, but yeah, you try it on different people. Like, how does this feel now? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that that part could come a little bit earlier or a bit a bit later because it's about conducting that those emotions, isn't it? You know, mm-hmm. like you want people to feel calm for a certain length of time, and then you hit them with it, and it's about tweaking. Um, but also, yeah, it's about you know we've got some really talented people working on that stuff on the on the mood of something, um, and I don't know if they ever kind of lose that feel. It's, I mean, it can be hard. You, you you do look at something for a long time, and that's when you do go to someone else and say, "Am I imagining things here, or does this feel you know less good or whatever?" Yeah. But uh, I don't I don't think it's lost forever. It, it's just you know because there's like I say, they're incredibly talented and have a real gift for for getting that feel and for you know achieving what what it is that they're envisioning yeah i mean maybe maybe this what you just said is kind of an answer to this question but like uh you know what is what is something that people don't appreciate about making a game like this in terms of difficulty like what what's what on you know from the player perspective looks like a very simple thing but for you guys is excruciatingly difficult uh that's a tough question because i like to say i mean I, I've always had quite a distance to the actual development being, you know, in the in the law side of it. So I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that, that's really kind of painful that they go through. I mean, even just if you think like just the design of the characters, you probably think that, that people that talented and they they are that they just it just pops out of them like you know fully formed. But the truth is that it can take thousands of sketches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then even then the work isn't done you, you you take something from all of them and you get some some hard feedback because you know a lot of this this stuff all comes out of you it comes out of a, a place that's really kind of personal to you and this is across the board you know the art team rightfully get a lot of praise here but it's the same with everyone in every discipline but it's all so personal to you and you work so hard on it and then you've got to have that painful feedback where you know you've got people judging what you've done and say you need to go back and try it because you can do better and what we're trying to achieve is this and all that. And you're like, all right, you know, and you got to absorb that and, and then get the, the strength up again to kind of go at it again with some kind of passion. So I think just that, the creative process. Um, and as I said, I'm so proud to work with the people I do because they're all so creative and so talented, but it's not easy that. It's it, like it's a lot of pain um, to get where we are, and uh, not just in terms of the hard work, but like I say, the the 
being judged <laughs> and for the people doing the judging you because they've got to kind of stand by that as well you know they're like they've got to know that their instincts are right that that, that you, you're kind of changing something someone's done and you, that that's the right call is a lot of Gotcha. Why it, that's why it all takes so long, isn't it? <laughs> and why it's not a magic formula. You just got to... That's why I always talk about the, the gut and like really trust that, that what you think and what you feel is, is the right way to go. It's the only trust, I think. Gotcha. Um, this, may be, this may be left field, uh, but and maybe you don't know the answer to it. Maybe you can just... Uh, say, Ooh, I, I don't know, but sounds interesting. Uh, a while ago, it was announced that Henry Selick, the director of Coraline and Nightmare Before Christmas, was working on a Little Nightmares project that he was going to do some kind of animated something. This was a few years mm-hmm. ago now. Do you know what happened to that project? Is it still happening? Has it kind of fallen aside? Uh, the, the honest answer is I have no idea. Um, I'm, I am not a Hollywood person, <laughs> probably. Thankfully, I would say, because <laughs> uh, that sounds like a very high-pressure job. But um, no, I, I mean that's the discussions that uh, I, I was never part of. So, I okay. think, uh, if there ever was anything to announce, that would be coming from Bandai Namco. But, gotcha. Uh, well, passing yeah, along that, I think that sounds fascinating. I'd like to see Henry Selick's take on Little Nightmares. That sounds wild. Yeah. <laughs> um. I wanted to focus in a little bit on a, I'm kind of like putting this, maybe this will be among our last questions here, kind of putting it near the end because it might be considered kind of spoilery for Little Nightmares too. But Mm -hmm. I wanted to focus in specifically on an early sequence uh, where you're getting chased by the man with the uh, burlap sack over his head with the shotgun. The hunter, yeah. Yeah. You shoot that guy, uh, you and Six. Can you talk about that sequence? Because that was the first moment. I mean, there's this game is just full of surprises, but that was the first moment that I was like wide eyed. That I was like, okay, we're we're in a different little nightmares. This is like, you know, <laughs> like up until this point, it it feels like a very defensive game. You're hiding, you're sneaking mm-hmm. around. That was an act of. It felt like an act of defensive aggression, like an offensive maneuver. And I just want, mm. I was hoping you could talk about like your thought behind that whole sequence and what went into it and what do you think what do you think it means for uh, for the larger narrative, you know? Um I mean I, I I wasn't part of that creating that sequence, so I I, I won't presume to kind of talk the thought behind it. I can tell you what I think of it though. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. I think it I think it changes changes it up. I think it's really important early on to let people know that they don't know what to expect. Uh, and I think that that does hold true for the way the game plays out. Uh, because everyone knew that, you know, it was a big joke when we uh, announced it at Gamescom and that you could hit people across the head with a soup ladle and, and all this. But, you know, because, I mean, the truth in the game is... You, yeah, you can wheel things and you can hit out, but it doesn't really make you an empowered figure no so that no. that cat that cat was out of the bag really that you could wheel stuff but people didn't know this was coming and i think that's really cool because like i say it kind of establishes establish, it establishes that idea in your head that i don't know what's coming i i i thought i knew little nightmares but this yeah like i say it's it's Felt a little bit out of character, didn't it? In a good way. But like I, I would they, that, they yeah. were back against the wall, and that, and that feeling of like, well, well, this is the only this is the only thing to do now, or we die. I think, yeah, all right, you got rid of him, but I would I wouldn't say I came out of it feeling like uh, Rambo. No, I mean, I think it was, <laughs> it was effective in that way of like, you're running, you're running, you, you know, you got to get out of there somehow. You come into that room and it's on the wall and you're like, well, mm. certainly not. I'm not going to grab <laughs> that, right? Like that can't be it. And then it was, then you do. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is, this is crazy. Mm. Uh, I, I really uh, love that sequence, um, to be clear. So I, that's why I wanted to, to hear more about it in depth. I think, I think that there's something of a cathars- cathartic moment in that as well. Like, I mean, you see there's so much, uh, detritus from the killing and, 
and flaying of, of other animals, you know, all the skins everywhere and the snares and rope traps and everything. It was just horrible and like what, what they were made into and what's coming your way. I think it felt that the real catharsis in, yeah, that cliche of the hunter getting it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I felt good about that because I hate hunters. Yeah. Trophy hunters. Uh, but, this uh, is, yeah. Yeah, th- yeah, thank you for diving into that. I appreciate it. Um, this is uh, maybe my last question. It's just kind of one of the sort of many little questions I had written off to the side here. Um, the the protagonist's name is Mono. Um, mm-hmm. And my question initially was, is that a Shadow of the Colossus reference? Because that's the, you know, the princess, for lack of a better term, her name is Mono. But then you mentioned the book Momo. And I'm now I'm wondering, <laughs> is that what that is from? Or does Mono, <laughs> is that just a cool name? Yeah, I love Shadow of the Colossus. Was that the princess's name? Am I am I misremembering now? That could be the case. I don't know. So I'm get well. I guess the short answer is no. If we're not even sure if that's her name. <laughs> no, I mean I would I would never do anything like that. You see, I, I'm uh, really kind of really strict with myself. Like I can't do such uh, you know direct uh, homages. Gotcha. But uh, I'm just looking now. Yeah, I, I looked. I looked at my phone. I, I, it is Mono is her name. I don't know if it's ever spoken no, no, in the, the game. Uh, well, the, the, oh yeah, it is Mono. Oh my god. Uh oh. That's have, terrible. Do we have to issue a little well, two patch? Heard it here first. My actual. <laughs> this is my first reaction video. Uh, yeah, no, it absolutely isn't. That's terrible, though, isn't it? Yeah. I, I this is, I got you, man. I I, I push you up against I the wall. Love, honestly, I'm gonna have to pull I, the shotgun down. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I'm on record several many times in fact is that is one of my all time favorite games so it's no one's gonna believe me are they <laughs> when that's not a real reaction <laughs> but uh, you know it was it was just funny just for me as a player I was like oh mono I wonder if they're calling out Shadow of the Colossus and then you can hold hands which is a, a very much an Ico thing and I was like oh these are some these are some a uh, team Ico fans these are compliments by the way you don't have to put your hands over your face <laughs> those are amazing games oh I know but oh that, that absolutely not I absolutely <laughs> didn't do that my god uh, You've thrown me. I never get thrown talking to people. I am thrown. Uh, oh, I'm so I sorry, know. Dave. I mean, because I, 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 I played that game so many times. I never knew her name. I don't think they just... say it in game. I think it was in the booklet on PlayStation Two. I think maybe that's I never read the booklets. I haven't read the booklet since Master System days. <laughs> when I had to write down the password <laughs> in the back. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to. To this, this is oh. how we wrap up our interview. Is I've just shattered your yeah. world. <laughs> Can we do a day two patch? There we go. We re- patch notes to rename now... the protagonist. <laughs> Mando. <laughs> no, no, that's being used as well. Isn't yeah, it? that one's that one's taken as well. Mm. What about oh. like Nathan Drake? Is that one available? <laughs> no, no one, no one would believe that. <laughs> it's, it's too cool that name. Uh. <laughs> Well, do you know, Dave, I, there was one time I was talking to someone about about like the influences, and I started making a joke about a, it being a Pac-Man ripoff, <laughs> you know, because of Bandai Namco, and, like, and then yeah. I was like, ah, hold on, <laughs> you got to be careful like, when you say that stuff. Real. We take those kind of things yellow, at face value. Yellow we... creature devouring monsters in a... No, no. Yeah. No, that's yeah, that's no, like instantly go to Wikipedia and update something and be like, you know, this game's a Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dave. I, it was great to talk to you. I, I, I'm a big fan of both games. I'm excited to uh, finish the second cool. one. So, uh, Thanks I, very much. It's been I a almost, I... I, I uh, it's a. It was a mistake to show it to my daughter because now I I have to play while like she's awake. I can't like stay up late and play the game. So it's it slowed me down a lot. But uh, it's been a lot of fun playing with her. So thanks, oh, thanks, really for, thanks for making the game. It. Yeah, thanks for enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode of MinMax Interviews. There are more like this if you want to check out our YouTube playlist or support MinMax on Patreon for more like this in the future. Content like this is supported by the community on patreon.com slash minmax. And if you continue to support us and you're here long enough, you can even eventually hear me talk about Breath of the Wild 2. Check us out. Thank you so much. 